day in Japan and um, I've been trying to find a, a place to sit down and talk to myself for a while um, but I haven't been able to until now because it's been so it's been so much uh, so many things happening so today is the first day that I'm able to maybe relax a little bit it's hard to find something interesting to say about this experience because so many other people have done it before I mean, I know personally at least like, I don't know, five people or something who have gone to Japan and lived here for a while and I mean, their experience is pretty much the same that I'm that I'm uh, going through now, I guess. It's, uh, every, I mean, everybody knows the narrative, you come from a smaller place, you come to this huge uh, human anthill, the city is really a jungle uh, in a way that I've never seen before. But, and everybody knows that, so what do I say? What, what can I, what's the point of me saying anything? when it's all been said before and been depicted before but still of course uh, that's the same as with any experience that uh, there's been a lot of people in the world before me and uh, still I want to create things so that means that I must have my perspective must be uh, valuable in itself because uh, nobody else is me so that's that's the mindset I have to uh, get into I guess um, since I came here, I've had some really interesting and nice encounters with the people. I had my first Japanese conversation with uh, a lady at uh, the baggage information at the airport. I was able to like wing the conversation a bit, a little bit of English and a little bit of Japanese. I asked her like about some words, what they were in Japanese, and I learned a bit. She asked me how I learned Japanese, and I, I really f I feel that that's a theme, that people are surprised and delighted that I, I know some Japanese, which makes me happy as well. So that's a, that's a very nice thing. Then when I, when I, came, to, when I came to my hostel, uh, I was put in the same room as a Swedish guy from Gothenburg, very obviously from Gothenburg, uh, with the, the laid-back style that, uh, that is associated with that. Uh, his name was Didi and he, um, he bought me lunch or I guess he bought me dinner and we had a beer. Apparently this guy comes to Japan for like a week every year and uh, spends tons of money because he earns tons of money back home which is something that I'll never do and he told me told me that everybody in Japan cheats on their partners and that you shouldn't smoke weed I guess so that's that's what I learned there oh well I mean I, I knew that not the cheating on their partners thing but so that was fun and interesting. The streets here are very... Around here I feel like they have streets where people just walk on the street and it's like the street is supposed to be an environment for humans to walk on and there's like the, the restaurants put out their little tables like a bit out on the street and the cars just have to like make do and, uh, and drive slowly uh, through the 
rabble of people, um, which is really nice. In Sweden, we don't really have uh, streets that are def designed for 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 humans in that way. Most of it is mostly they're designed for cars. I feel. Uh, I mean, except for like one main street in every city, uh, which is a shopping street. But apart from that, we don't have. It feels more organic here. I feel like the city is built organically and. Um, and uh, lifelike in a way that we don't have at home. Things are more cramped together and as I said it's a jungle. It feels like the city has grown forth just like uh, the forest does naturally. I come from the countryside so I think a lot about the difference between the countryside and the and the city and what it does to your mentality and and the contrast between what nature looks like and what and what um, the city looks like. Here I feel that the city is more obviously part of nature than uh, it is back home. I guess it expands my symbolic vocabulary in my mind a bit. That the difference between the city and the forest isn't the same here as it as it is in Sweden. Um, I think a lot about individuality when I'm here. When you're a kid in the Western world, or maybe just if you don't have many Asian influences in your life, the standard position might be that Japanese people might feel first of all you think they look the same which they of course don't at all and you also feel like they're very square like they you might feel that they um, erase themselves like they they're not individuals they're just a part of uh, this uh, big anthill you could say like they're worker ants that's a stereotype i guess that's that's a, that's an image you might have in your head the point is that of course it's not possible that it is that way. Every human is, uh, of course, an individual. We all share the same kinds of emotions. We all experience the world with the same system of uh, feedback in our brain. Basically, all humans get sad for the same reasons, and we get happy from the same reasons, and we have this in common. Compared to the things we have in common, the differences between us are so few. I want to, um, I want to be here and meet people and get to know them as a person. Uh, with with myself and I want to experience this culture with not just through a screen Through a medium that somebody else directed. That's what it is to see f something for yourself. I think and uh, I feel that I am I'm starting uh, I'm, I'm starting that process I ha or I have I have started that process to get that get up close and personal uh, With this place so for that. I'm very excited. I'm very happy In the beginning, I did have the the idea that maybe maybe the it's part of Japanese culture to kind of erase yourself uh, or like erase, not erase maybe, but suppress your own personality. And maybe uh, they didn't value uh, individuality so much, you know, because there's this work ethic thing, and you're supposed to perform a function, and there's a lot of pride in that. Uh, and uh, or how how you feel about it as a person doesn't matter in that equation. Also, the the idea of social manners in in public spaces. You're not supposed to stand out. You're you're not supposed to make sounds. I don't know if that's how they all see it. And I mean, of course, these concepts uh, are a thing in Sweden as well and in the rest of the world. It's not it's not a uniquely Japanese thing, but it's strong here. Uh, I think. So I thought maybe that's maybe they do maybe they do value individuality uh, a bit less. But then when you when you think about it, first off, it's 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 a very capitalistic society. It's not socialistic, so maybe I mean that's more individual individualistic than than uh, than where I come from, which is which has a lot of socialist values. And also, if you look at uh, if you look at their at their art and their media, and uh, the hero myth is very strong here. The I mean, I grew up watching a lot of anime, and the idea of the of the individual hero uh, saving the day and and using his his the, the powers within him to be something special, that's very strong here. Uh, and if you look at the the giant mecha archetype, for example. The giant mecha is a huge war machine shaped like a human, and war machines in real life uh, aren't shaped like that, and they don't work like that. And the, it's a giant war machine shaped like a human, controlled by one human. It's it's the ultimate power fantasy of of being uh, being one person, you here 
control like you control your control your body like this this is your your spatial hmm your body is your tool for interacting with the space around you there's a there's a meanness in in this here and uh, the, the one one connection between the brain and the and the fingers for example it's it's uh, it's um the fantasy of the giant mecca could be seen as a wish to influence the world more with your own self what what you what you have right here it's the f the feeling of of uh, ex expanding these powers that you already have and just boosting them uh, and it's a it's a huge uh, expression of emotion uh, and individuality that that is uh, is uniquely japanese i think from this from the beginning and then the rest of the world has has been influenced by it but i think in summary the contrast between individualism and collectivism is an interesting topic uh, i think um, which i think about a lot here in some ways uh, this culture is very individual focused and in some ways it's uh, very collective focused in a in a different way than what i got back at home and then my my next my next thought is that recently I've been listening to this idea of that humans are not individuals, but we we are individuals. We are a, a human is not a unique. Th um, well, it's a unique thing, but a human is not really a thing. We're just a collection of of influences from uh, different places. So when I the people in my life that I've spent the most time with, or that I've been influenced the most by. They are a big part of me. They exist within me, and 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 what I am is they are they are a part of what I am. And in the same way, I am of course a biological creature, which means I have a, a lot of similarities, and a lot of me is the same as other animals, and and particularly as other humans, just just from a physical standpoint. From that perspective, I've, I've been thinking that this place, and I I feel like such an I feel like such an outsider here, of course, or like I stand out, definitely. So, so the question is, what I, what am I here? Am I? It's easy to feel like I'm visiting another world, um, and like I'm, a, I'm a spectator. I come from somewhere else, and I look at this place and these people, and and maybe I'm. I keep thinking about what am I in this context, and the individuality. Uh, idea makes me think that I am a, I am a part of this because when I when I grew up I uh, I was partly influenced by Japanese culture uh, also a lot of other things of course but 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 partly by by culture from here so so that means that me being here is something that Japan created it didn't create me as a as a whole nothing created me as a whole I'm a unique combination of different things, different other things from the world. But the fact that I am here, the fact that I am here is the doing of uh, this place and this culture. And in that way, I'm just as natural a part of this as everybody else here. And that's uh, that, that's uh, that I think is an interesting thought. And uh, so now for the next coming months, I will have to. I'll have to define what um, what is it that I'm doing here, and what what do I bring to this place, and what does this place bring to me? It has brought a lot to me already, of course, even before I came here. But and what? How does it change me? I want to uh, take as much of it into myself as possible, and uh, and uh, learn from the best stuff, and uh, throw away the bad stuff, and uh, become become a bigger and better human. And that. That, I guess, is why I'm here. Yeah, maybe that's it. Alright, so I'm lumbering around these streets, uh, looking for someone to eat. Someone to eat. I'm looking for somewhere to eat, and uh, it's been a long day, I'm really tired. Uh, it's been warm, it's been very warm, and uh, the thought occurred to me that People like me are probably the inspiration for that big, huge monster from uh, Spirited Away. 
You know, he comes in, he wants service, but you can't talk to him and he smells like shit. 